Welcome back to the channel, everybody. We are going to continue our budget rogue hearthstone laddering experiment. So just to reiterate, we are trying to climb the ladder as much as we can using no legendaries, no epics, and no adventure cards. Uh, last last time we bought another TGT pack and increased the value of our deck by 80 dust. Um, it's kind of getting up there now. Uh, I'm not quite sure how well it'll do though. <laughs> So we will see how it goes. Um, one, I can play this as a one. I'm, I definitely want to go. Look, want to look for a two, I guess. Yeah. Do I want to keep the shattered sun? I can, I can play this as a one. No. I want to find another two drop, or a stronger, more act, more proactive three drop. Well, we got the shattered sun black anyway. So let's see how it goes. Should I ooze? Should I play ooze with tempo? Yeah, let's do it. Now that we have two oozes, I'm doing it. Uh, like I've said before, sometimes you want to play it for value, you want to save it in your hand and use it to get value later on, but other times you just want to play it for tempo, and I think uh, Rogue versus Rogue is really important to get tempo. Uh, is he going to swing? If he's not going to swing, my second ooze does a ton of work as is. So I think he was setting up for um, weapon up. Well, he was setting up for a deadly poison this turn. I don't think he has a backstab in his hand, otherwise he would have used it. Yeah, he's going to have to deadly poison again, which is fine for me. Um, it's wasted. It, well, it basically nullified his turn too, um, and we're quite far ahead, especially since we can start dealing a ton of damage. My turn four will probably be sap weapon up. So yeah, let's do this. Let's just run in. Pretty straightforward game here, just being aggressive. Um, just playing for tempo, yeah. Okay, so uh, last video I was just talking about um, BlizzCon Day 1. Definitely looking forward to BlizzCon Day 2 tomorrow. Um, I'd love to hear if you, you know, any number of you guys are following along, uh, what you guys think, and yep, yeah, definitely doing the sap this turn. And I'm probably going to um, fan weapon up next turn again. Yeah, uh, I don't see a 5 drop in hand. So I'm happy to swing here because I don't have a five mana play and the fan doesn't use up my entire turn. So, okay, this is some sort of a, it's an oil rogue. I'm quite sure that it's an oil rogue. Do I still want a fan or do I want to heal? I don't think I actually want to heal. Okay, Stormpike's not bad. Do I run in? Yeah, I do run in. Um, this, Pretty poor turn from me. I really, really would have liked to have actually had a, an actual turn three play, or sorry, an actual turn five play. If I'd had this in hand earlier, it would have been much more convenient. But uh, you know, them's the breaks. You don't always get to, you don't always get what you want. Uh, is he going to start making guys? My rationale behind not playing the refreshment was that uh, it would have given him health, but since I was already at thirty, it would not, it would not have helped me out at all. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play this and might as well run in just in case I need the storm pike or no, I can't play the storm pike next turn I can double I can double hit the ooze only take two damage um, pretty efficient for me mm. So yeah, I'm wondering what's, wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. I'd um, love to hear what you guys are are keeping up with in BlizzCon? Are you watching the StarCraft tournaments? And, you know, honestly, there's so many things going on. I'd love to follow it all. And, you know, definitely I will go back and watch some of it. Um, on, on the YouTube channels, there's a number of YouTube channels. Uh, and it's actually, yeah, so th th it's all there. Um, you know, if you want to catch up on it, I was slowly catching up on some uh, StarCraft tonight. And, hmm. Mm, it's so so you know it's really strange i really like the starcraft casters you know um personalities like day nine very very funny very hilarious really good at um, entertaining the crowd very charismatic in, con in control very charismatic artosis um tasteless day nine's brother nick plot um but the game itself is not that what are you doing that, that was a really expensive clear. The game itself is not that compelling to me, to be honest. Um, I don't see what the attraction is. Uh, let me think about my turn. I don't want to sprint. I could just play Stormwind. Is there any benefit to not playing Stormwind? Is it better? Is there any benefit to 
Silver Hand Weapon. Silver Hand Weapon puts the same amount of damage on the board, but allows the SI7 to get value killing the Squire. I could also Storm Pike Weapon. That's not too bad because I can kill the SI7, but the Storm Pike is then vulnerable to uh, Violent Apprentice and running in with the weapon. So I think this is the correct play. Uh, it's slow, it's weak to sap. I don't know if his deck has sap. I think it's more likely it has sap because he has a Violet Teacher. Um, I'm very, I'm definitely expecting prep, um, prep sprint, uh, prep oil, uh, prep flurry, things like that. If you're running a Violet Teacher, you want prep. And if you're running prep, you want three or more costs. You want three, you want spells that cost three or more since prep reduces um, your spell costs by three. So that's the read I'm going to make there, but we could be wrong. It's always hard to tell at rank 18 what exactly is going on. There's the, there's the prep, prep as I expected. Uh, what are we going to see? Oil, yes, prep oil. I would have weaponed up there. I think that was a little bit of a mistake uh, to not weapon up first. Okay, so he, he was doing that in order to develop the Dr. Balanced. Hmm. It's going to be a little bit problematic for me. I could go 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. 4-4. Four, four. There's not much else I can do at the moment. And the refreshment, you know, I'm just playing it now. It gives me a bit of health, but I'm far, I'm pretty far behind, so... It doesn't matter too much if it gets health. I really need to regain board control. And the refreshment's pretty good for that. Um, but yeah, uh, we're in a situation again where we can't deal with Dr. Boom. I've been thinking a little bit about what I would actually, oh, that's painful, um, what I actually would run to deal with a boom. Um, and the only thing I can really think of that's not epic, which is, you know, not read, not BGH, is a um, MCT. And I might consider crafting an MCT. I don't think we can do anything here. I can weapon up, but I, th I, th I think I'm just going to end up taking too many damage, too much damage. Yeah, I think the just running in like that's going to get me killed. Um, he has 11 damage on the board. No, 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 he's got 10. But if he runs the boom bots, no, I'm done. I'm done. The boom bots are going to hit my face. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, the boom bots are going to get tons of value. Um, on me. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate. I, I know no answer to Dr. Boom. And it's got to come up again and again. Um, and I think the more times that we lose to Boom, the closer I will be to crafting an MCT. Um, what else would be good against Boom? Let me think. And I'd love to hear your guys' opinion as well. What do you think I could put in this deck that's not Epic, Legendary, or Adventure card that would deal with Boom? Because, I mean, I, I ranted about this before, but what do I do? Like, what are you doing against Boom? He plays Boom on seven. What am I gonna play? A War Goal? Boom Junior? Like, what? it's a joke. <sighs> okay. One. Well, I could go one weapon up. One weapon up. Let's just see what happens. I'll keep these early game cards. It's not too bad. Yeah, what else can I do? Um, I could play the Exorcist, but the Exorcist gets busted through a 3-5 and still dies to the boom for free. It's just not that compelling. A legendary player, eh? Um, is it better to Murloc or better to Bone Guard? Now, assuming he's playing Aspirant, it's better to Bone Guard. Because my Bone Guard plus Weapon Up can challenge the Aspirant for free. Now I'm assuming that most Druids will be playing Aspirant instead of... Uh, well, I'm assuming most Druids will play Aspirant because Aspirant is a great card. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dynasis Aspirant is a 2 for a 2-3. Uh, Battle Cry give you a Mana Crystal and Death Rattle take away a Mana Crystal. Okay, looks like he's... Okay, hmm. Hmm. Do I want to tax him here? Weaponing up doesn't do that much for me. If I play the Raider... If I play the Raider and he kills it with the Keeper, then I can clear... It's, it's quite an awkward turn again for me. Uh, 
so many things I need, so many cards I need. If this wasn't a raider, if it was a buccaneer, I could have, you could be doing so much more work. But you know, like I said, there's the brakes and there's the aspirant. Like I expected, but I can clear it, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, it's just going to be quite a slow turn. But uh, my future turns are looking okay, because I can gnomish after that. And I can use this to gain um, some more value, clearing you know the keeper if I need to. Um, so I can Gnomish and then I can uh, Shattered Sun weapon up. So it's not too bad looking in, looking ahead, but um, this sort of aggressive Druid deck, I'm 90% sure there'll be double Force Sav. So it might be a little bit problematic if I get below. Uh, I think it's 14 health. Yeah, Force of Nature Savage Raw is 14 health. Okay, I think I'm still going to play Gnomish. Uh, because it challenges whatever's left over. That heal is going to be very useful. Um, but we're going to be in quite a lot of trouble if he gets something down, like a. If he draws. Basically, it depends on whether he draws into the cards he needs. He's going to charge that? No, he didn't charge that. Okay. Hmm. Fan. My mana is a little bit of an issue. I think I do need to fan here just to reduce a little bit of the damage I'm taking. I can go fan, blood sail, which isn't great, but I have to put something onto the board, otherwise I'm just gonna fall behind. Not that I'm not already behind. Yeah, fan, fan blood sail. Um, this is problematic. Yeah. What could I have done, what could I have done differently this game? Not had a Murloc Raider. <laughs> Had something that does something other than just a vanilla one for a two one, yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, or something like an SI seven, or pulling out a uh, backstab. Yeah, would have been really helpful this game, but uh, was not to be. Why are you clearing the board? You should definitely be going face with a board like this. Hmm. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble because um, I can't reach the shredder. I can possibly, if I draw a backstab, no, my ogres are too slow. Hmm. I think I need to fan. It's too slow, yeah. I'm dead to, oh, I have to heal myself, but I think I'm still dead to a load of things. Heal myself. Let's just see what else is in his deck. There's probably some sort of swipe or force of nature shenanigans in there. I'm dead, he's got nine, showing nine. Uh, this, he just needs two damage. If there's going to be a Living Roots, or a Swipe, or a Starfire, there are a number of things. Yep, thought so. Um, yeah, what happened there? I think the Innovate Keeper did a lot of work on my Bone Guard. Oh, a little bit unfortunate, but like I said, didn't expect this to be easy. We're at 60 gold, let's just play some more, see how we go. Yeah, so not having a lot of success this uh, this session, but mm, it's, it's, it's always going to happen. Sometimes you're just going to have a bad session. Sometimes you just got to see it through. Ah, uh, this is not too bad. I can go one. Deadly, I don't like keeping, because Deadly is a three drop. But then again, if I one and then weapon up, I can Deadly along with another two drop. Ah, oh, save the Deadly. I... Don't actually, yeah, uh, uh, in my usual rogue deck, the, the rogue deck that I don't restrict my um, cards that I use, I don't run deadly and I don't run, I don't run uh, Assassin's Blade. I think that they are a little slow um, to get maximum value out of something like deadly and Assassin's Blade. They're a little slow. Deadly requires a full weapon, or at least a turn two, um, to, to weapon up. And I'm not going to swing. No, I'm not going to swing. Uh, usually I would swing if he was start if he had some sort of armor gain, because of Shield Slam. Shield Slam is quite problematic. Uh, this is kind of awkward, but it's kind of slow for him to just develop this, so it's, I think I'll be okay. Um, what sort of deck is this? You've got a fire, golden fiery war axe. Interesting. This is a high level warrior with acolyte. There's probably patrons in here, or um, 
could be some sort of fatigue warrior. Hard to say, hard to say. So let's run in. I'm not going to waste my weapon charge because I can reduce his his armor down to zero. Um, I think it's really key in the rogue versus warrior matchup to keep keep control of his armor. Uh, as soon as his armor gets above, say, four or five, he can just start shield slamming whatever you put down, and that's really, really problematic. Uh, but if you keep it below, below that, um, he might need to spend his turn armoring up before he shield slams, which makes shield slam effectively a three cost removal card as opposed to a one cost removal card. So that's really useful. Um, it's a really useful thing to keep in mind against warriors. And what I'm going to do here is develop my assassins since like I said before, it is really slow, but will do a ton of work for me in reducing, in keeping his armor at a reasonable level. Um, and shield slam is such a key warrior card. Basically, I think every warrior that has has the card will play the card. Hmm. What does that suggest to me? What does that suggest? Do I ooze? Do I ooze? Is it worthwhile to ooze? I don't think it is. Uh, because ooze locks out the rest of my turn. I think I prefer to ooze something else, like another uh, fiery war axe, something like that. And I am just going to swing because the Assassin's Blade has so many turns worth of attacks in it that you just just use it. Just use it. Because if you save it up and then you it's it's more likely or not than not that you just will run out of turns to use it. Um, I think you can be quite liberal with something like an Assassin's Blade up until maybe uh, two two attacks left, something like that. <clears throat> okay. I will yeah, let's do a backstab. No, 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 not doing that. Yep. Run in and then shoot. Do I shoot? Do I shoot or do I sprint? I shoot. And I deadly, actually. I was going to acidic, but I think there's probably some more weapons in there. Um, this is this instance where I'm using this as a... Um, I should have just dead lead on the assassins, yeah. I think I spent too much time this today watching BlizzCon and not enough focusing on my Hearthstone. Yep, there's the shield slam. That's not too bad because it's it's like a three, three damage overkill. Um, and that's not too bad as we build up to turn 10. I really do want to save, like I said, sprint on turn 10 is much stronger than sprint on turn, well any turn before 10. Because you sprint into an Earth Ring or any of your three drops, it's a really you gain so many cards, you might even sprint into a couple of backstabs. You can do a lot with a sprint, um, and the later you play, the better. And so we're doing okay, we're doing okay. Um, I made a mistake playing... Okay, that's going to be problematic. Uh, there's the second shield slam. I need to find something to finish this Grommage. Oof. Okay, I might look for a sap. The sap might be good here. Yep, that's exactly what I was looking for. I think the sap is fine here. He gained value from it, but I think the sap is fine here. I mean, there's no other way for me to clear it, and it um, basically undoes eight eight of his mana. He may spend, he may do it again, but then he has to activate it again. And uh, an unactivated Grimash is much less threatening than a ten. Okay, it's some sort of. Okay, Dragon Control Warrior. Ah, what's with all these Wallet Warriors, man? We are going to be in trouble yet again. Hmm. What do I do? I think I definitely developed the Ogre. There's no way for me to clear that. Develop the Ogre and then just heal up a little bit. Yeah, because I'm... There's not much else I can do. I don't quite have the... I can't reach... I don't have the reach to clear this Chillmore. So I'm going to have to use the Ogre to do it. Or use my smaller minions whilst the Ogre will ideally survive the AoE. Existent or non-existent AoE. Okay. Okay, interesting, interesting. I don't think I would have... <sighs> well, hey, you, you have the cards, you play the cards. That's cool. That's good for me, the Justicar coming out, um, but uh, 
basically none of the rest of that is any good for me. I think we're dead. Uh, I can backstab this thing and I can run it in, run into it. But um, there's still 15 damage looking at me. Yeah, we're dead. Well played. And another loss, 13-13. Oof. We're in a little bit of trouble here. But you know what? This is a good experience. This is a good learning experience to see how it might feel for a beginner player who gets, who maybe you picked up Hearthstone a week ago. And basically I picked up this series a week ago. And how you might feel once you get past rank 20. How oppressive it feels to get past rank 20 and you just run into these wallet warriors and face hunters and uh, what, what else was it? Tempo mages and whatnot. Um, it just feels a little like, what can you do? It feels like you, there's nothing you can do. And obviously, uh, rogue versus uh, rogue versus warrior is always going to be a tough matchup. Um, I think generally because... Why, why, why? Uh, because of the warrior's armor and the level of... Um, and the warrior has a lot of tempo as well. So one of the key things about Rogue is tempo, but the Warrior has a lot of tempo in executes and shield slams. Warrior has tons of premium removal. If you count things such as, I am going to coin this out and then I can protect it with my dagger. Um, you know, Warriors have all these weapons, which are very high tempo removal. You play them on one turn, you kill one thing. Next turn, you don't have to pay any mana to use them. That's why a card like Death Spite is excellent. A card like War Axe, Fiery War Axe is basically mandatory in every Warrior deck. Um, so yeah, Warriors have a lot of high tempo, high removal. Um, very strong if you have a constructed deck. Uh, if, you, if you have all the cards that you need um, to put in. That's why Control Warrior and Fatigue Warrior are such popular decks. You'll see, you, know, you, you would have seen a couple of them at BlizzCon as well. Um, just because they can, they you, they can afford to put a lot of value in their decks. I think I will still do this to tax the hero power next turn, just to slow him down. Um, I won't swing because I probably will be deadly poisoning up. Hmm. Yeah. So, like, what 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 could a deck like mine do against Control Warrior? Possibly a second sap, maybe. Hmm. Hard to say. Hard to say. Okay, I'm going to um, gain value off my hero power by doing this. So I don't get the three damage this turn, but I get the one freebie damage on his face. And I'll develop this because, well, why the hell not? It taxes his hero power again. Since last turn he pinged my Argent Horse Rider, it seems this turn he might do that also, or depending, he might want to do something else. Um, either way, the Voodoo Doctor is costing him some tempo and possibly costing him some value. Yeah, it's costing him some tempo. Uh, do I want to sap this thing? No. No. And I swing at, I think I will swing at the Water Elemental. Uh, the issue with something that freezes a hero is that if it attacks me, it doesn't take the damage from my dagger. But if I attack it, um, I can apply the damage and voluntarily freeze myself. Um, thereby, like I get basically attacking into a freeze minion allows you to deal the damage. But if if the, if the freeze minion gets a chance to attack into you, you are going to be in trouble because you have no chance to use that charge. So I decide to use that charge whilst I could. Uh, it's not too bad. I will develop my ogre. So we're in a pretty strong position. Actually thinking about how to deal with a uh, Wallet Warrior. I call it a Wallet Warrior because uh, the deck costs so much gold and dust. Um, probably faster late game. Uh, some Krakens. So uh, that might actually be a, an ideal pickup. Something like a North Sea Kraken. Hmm, what are we looking at? I don't want to play it into Mirror Entity. I'm sensing Mirror Entity. I'm all, you always sense Mirror Entity against. Uh, yeah, there it is. That's fine. Always sensing Mirror Entity against a mage. But that's not too bad. And I'm not going to do anything else here. Well, I could sap. No, no. That would be stupid. Sapping the ooze. What, I'm going to lose a uh, three attack weapon. That would be so dumb. Um, good thing I didn't. 
<sighs> yeah, so what else would I do against a warrior deck? A wallet warrior deck, what would I put in there? That's an interesting ping because uh, it allows me to develop my Stormwind, thereby taking both of them out of ping range. I think I definitely, if I was in Ipatee's position, I definitely would have pinged the sheep to get the guaranteed kill, because now he can't ping anything. Although I, I will be weak to something like a flame strike. Although it appears as if he does not have it. Okay, are you gonna go face? Okay, sure, sure, sure. Is that another mirror entity? You got one, you got two. You got one, you got two. Well, let's draw. I'm, I'm pretty positive it'll be a second mirror entity. No, it wasn't. Okay. I wonder what it is. If it's not a mirror entity, it's probably something spell related. I think I want to preserve the health of my Stormwind Champ, so I will sacrifice our Swamp Ooze. And it's not an effigy. It's something spell related. Good thing I don't have too many spells. Well, I do have spells, but... Um, these spells aren't too... It wouldn't be too disastrous if they got counterspelled. And uh, Spellbender, not too bad either. And it looks like he's running out of resources, although the way he's pinging my face suggests... Um, suggests Fireball. It could also be a Vaporize. So let's do this, and then I will send our sheep in to check for Vaporize. No, it's not Vaporize. Okay. Well then I'm just going to play around the... I'm going to play around the... Play around the uh, counter spell by doing this now. If it gets counter spell, no it didn't get counter spell. It could be an ice block also. And that can be quite problematic. He, he might just be put, um, buying time until turn 10, which is now, and he can uh, pyroblast me, which would be a problem. Or, you know, fireball, frostbolt. Yeah. No, so that's not quite it. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's... Ah, great. Excellent card to pick up. Um, I will sprint here because I know it's not a counter spell. And we get to... Okay, that's not bad. Should I sap that thing? Should I sap it? Well, no, I don't need to, because I can apply enough damage to, to his face without having to sap it. So this will get it the ice block to pop. Then I can clear this thing. Then heal my face. I'm still dead to Pyroblast, but I think he would have Pyroblasted if he had it let. If he had it earlier, he would have Pyroblasted me. So I'm thinking he's got a fireball in hand. He was just slowly trying to slowly, slowly ping me down. Uh, yeah, okay, poor played. Well, at least we got a... We ended up with, an, with at least a positive win-loss. Okay. And we got a Sinister Strike. Not too interested in that. And one more victory. Hmm. I think I'll save it for another time. I think I've had my fair share of uh, interacting with the internet and watching things such as BlizzCon for today. So... Uh, before I go, I'd like to thank you guys in advance for liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. You know, I do this for the love and, you know, any gesture from you guys would be wonderful. It means a lot to me. Um, and until next time, I hope you guys have a lovely and wonderful day. This is No Dust signing off. See you next time.